want you to speak to me. And I believe that when we make ourselves available and allow ourselves to forget the awkwardness, and I know our kids may be watching near us, but we get to the place where we say, I want to hear from God. I know in this time, in this hour, we need to hear a word from the throne of heaven. So I wonder if you'll join in with me right now, whether you want to stand up um, in your living room or you just want to close your eyes. Just allow the spirit to move in this time of prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you right now. God, we're asking and we're praying that you would move on this live right now. I'm asking that the spirit of God would move in such a mighty way upon each and every individual that may be watching this service. God, I pray that you would prick our hearts. I pray that you would begin to touch us. I pray that you would begin to lead us and direct us and guide us. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give a specific word tailor fit for Calvary Apostolic Church. I pray that you would touch those that come on this live and are looking for something and looking for hope, looking for direction, looking for guidance. God, I pray that they would find it, God. I pray that we would all find an altar, God, where we will die to our flesh and die to our will and die to our own desires. I feel something right now. I wonder if we can continue to pray just for a little bit and seek the face of God because I believe, I truly feel that God is wanting to do something great in this service today. But if we'll allow God to if we'll allow God to touch our hearts and our minds and our spirits, he wants to lead you. He wants to direct you and he wants to guide you. Come on, just for a couple more seconds. Let's just pray. God, we need you today. We need you, Lord. We can't do this on our own ability. We can't do this on our own accord. Come on, Calvary. I know you feel what I feel right now. The Holy Ghost is trying to move at the beginning of this service. Lord Jesus, help us uh, arrest our spirits, arrest our attention during this couple of minutes today, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus, help us to make our call in an election sure with you. Uh, I pray, God, give me the mind of Christ. God, give me the pulse of this church, God, right now. Help me, oh God, to speak only what you would have this church to hear. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I feel something already. I feel something great. I feel anticipation. I feel God wants to do something great. Let me tell you something before I get into my message today. The Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. But let me tell you something. I believe that God is not a respecter of places as well. I believe that in this time, in this hour where we're having to stay at home and having to watch the services, God's spirit wants to move. I feel it right now. He wants to move in your living room. He wants to fill somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But if we'll surrender our will and surrender render our desires and we'll give ourselves to these couple of minutes to this service and allow God to speak to us. I believe God wants to move in your living room. God wants to move in your bedroom. God wants to move in your life. God wants to move in your finances. If you believe that, type in amen, because I'm telling you, God wants to do something great today. Mm, I feel it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel it. Thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. Amen. So I'm going to get into my message today. And if for title's sake, if you want, I believe I want to talk to you today from the simple topic of there is strength in numbers. Ooh, I feel it. There is strength in numbers. Now, if you're a sports fan, and I'm going to get a little carnal here for a little bit, I'm a, I'm a huge basketball fan, and a couple of years ago, there was a great team by the name of the Golden State Warriors, and what their motto was, was there is strength in numbers. They wanted everybody, that was, I feel the Holy Ghost right now, they wanted their fans to understand something, that they are just as important as every player that takes the court in each and every game. So they came up with this model, their strength in numbers. They would also say that the fan is the sixth man. That means that the fans that came to watch the game was just as important as the person that was shooting the ball. They were just as important as the coach who was drawing up the strategy. 
I come to tell Calvary Apostolic Church under the unction of the Holy Ghost, there is strength in numbers. There is there is power in unity when we're unified and I feel the Holy Ghost. There is strength in unity and the enemy understands that and the only way he can stop an apostolic church from having an apostolic move of God is that he gets us into a place where we're not unified. When there is dysfunction and discord in the church and there are things happening behind the scenes and people are talking about the leadership of this church and how we don't agree with this and how we don't agree about this policy and this stand that the church is coming against. We've got to understand that there's strength in numbers. One can put a thousand to flight, but yay, two can put ten thousand to flight. Let me tell you something, Calvary Church. God has a revival for your church. There is something brewing. I feel it right now under the unction of the Holy Ghost. There is something brewing. There is something special. But the enemy understands that if he can get us fighting one another instead of fighting him, he will destroy every chance we have to have a move of God. I feel something right now, church. And if I step out of bounds, you listen to what your pastor has to say. I am under him. I am under his authority but let me tell you something if the enemy's trying to get you away from your man of god this is not the time or the place this is not the time or the place where you to backslide for you to say i don't need to listen to my pastor i don't need to i'm telling you you need to listen to me right now your pastor hasn't told me anything but i know i'm in the holy ghost right now you need a man of god in your life you need somebody to tell you when you're wrong you need somebody to point you in your uh, point a finger in your face and let you know uh, I'm the man. Uh, let me tell you something. David made a sin, uh, and Nathan the prophet came unto him uh, and said, "Thou art the man." Uh, let me tell you something. David was a king. Uh, he could have had Nathan killed uh, when he confronted him about his sin with Bathsheba. But let me tell you what he did. He owned up to his sin and he wrote Psalms 51 uh, right after. And he said in Psalms 51, uh, wash me with hyssop uh, and make me clean. Uh, let me tell you somebody, I'm telling you under the unction of the Holy Ghost, uh, somebody needs to get right with your man of God. Get right aligned with him because they're straight to numbers. Hallelujah. There's strength in numbers. I feel like preaching, y'all. I know I'm on video call, but I feel like preaching today. I feel like telling somebody, you're not alone. Uh, you're not abandoned. God has not forgotten about you. And God has something special for your life. Uh, but you've got to stay in alignment to the will of God. The, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, falls from the head down. That means you need somebody. You need a leadership. You need a man of God. You need a preacher in your life because he's the head and the anointing flows from the head down I'm telling you somebody hear me today you need a man of God in your life there's strength everybody say it with me there's strength in numbers there's strength in numbers and you know what the enemy's trying to do right now look at the world look at the spirit oh god of the division that's coming against the blacks and the whites and everything's pointed and everything everybody's confused and everybody's disrupted but let me tell you something at this time in this hour you need a clear voice you need a clear voice you need a man of god in your life that is seeking god's face for your family. It's not a time to backslide. Somebody hear me right now. This is not the time to decide to go to a different church because you don't agree. You need a man of God in your life. There is strength in numbers. Somebody stay focused. Stay focused. I won't be much longer. Stay focused with me. There's strength in numbers. There is something about a core of people coming together. And saying, we're going to be unified and we're going to see what God wants to do in Crestview, Florida. That's what we're talking about today. Crestview. What can God do in Crestview, Florida? He's not going to do it if we're not unified, if we're not one. 
So I want to talk to you about a story that even the young people, if there's any kids on here, there's some of them that can probably preach it better than I can. It's the story of David and Goliath, the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17 that we all know about and we've all heard and we've all went to Sunday school and we've had the, the teacher get a tall person and get a short person and show that the short person kills the big person as signification of David. David and Goliath, we've all been there and we've all heard the story. But let me break it down to you. I feel this so strong in the Holy Ghost for this church. Listen to me. Goliath came out to the people of God. Now understand that in 1 Samuel 17, it wasn't just one Israelite that was hearing what Goliath was saying. Goliath came out, the Bible says for 40 days, day and night, that means 80 times he came out and said, send me a man. But let me tell you something, Church Crestview, Florida, hear me under the unction of the Holy Ghost. He was speaking to an army. He wasn't speaking to just one individual. He was speaking to an army. And he told the army, listen, I want you to choose one man to fight me. One man. But this is my problem with the whole story. And Goliath saying, send me a man is because there was an army of people. Not one that he was talking to. Now listen to me. Listen to me, church, and I, I feel the Holy Ghost. What the enemy is trying to do in this last day is to begin to tell the people how we're going to fight. Listen to me right now, because this is what I'm trying to get at. How is Goliath going to demand to the people of God that only one person comes to fight him when there's an army. Now listen to me. There's strength in numbers. And so as Goliath is barking out all these orders, send me one man. And he's saying that to an army of people. The people of God allowed the enemy to tell them how they're going to fight. When they didn't realize their real strength was in the numbers. Ah, uh, Holy Ghost, help us right now. The real strength was not in the one person, but the real strength was in each and every one of them. Was their brothers that were hiding? Was their brothers that were standing right beside them? Let me tell you something, Crestview, Florida. The enemy has come against you, and he has has convinced you to fight him one on one you can't defeat the enemy fighting him one on one you need your brothers you need your sisters you need a man of God in your life to defeat the Goliath in your world you can't do this on your own. You can't do this. You can't overcome uh, the addictions. I'm talking to somebody specifically right now. You can't overcome the addictions uh, trying to do it on your own. Uh, Goliath has been barking in your ear and telling you, send me one man. Uh, but there's strength in numbers. Uh, ah, hallelujah. There's strength in numbers. Uh, there's strength in numbers. Uh, you need your brother and your sister. You need your church. Uh, don't. Oh, hallelujah. Don't disengage right now. Don't disengage in this time of quarantine. Somebody listen to me right now. It's not a time to disengage, but it's time to get a hold of God. Woo! There's strength, I'm telling you. There's strength in numbers. And I'm telling you what I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you what's happening. Is the enemy is trying to put, throw discord in all of our churches. Not just the one in Bessemer. Not just the one in Crestview, Florida. But in every apostolic church. There's a reason why. Because he understands that if a church becomes unified, Goliath has no chance. No giant in your city has a chance. But we've got to bind together. We need our brothers and our sisters. Hallelujah. You know what I feel right now? I feel a divine word for somebody. 
I do, and I'm not saying that to boast on myself, but I'm telling you what I feel right now. Somebody needs to mend your relationship with your pastor today. You need to mend your relationship because you can't make it to heaven without a man of God. You can't make it to heaven without a man of God. You need a man of God in your world. Everybody say it with me. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. And Goliath is barking. Now, I'm going to get to my point. I'm almost done. God, we need you right now. Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost would move on this last point. Let them hear me, oh God. Let them hear what I'm saying right now. Okay, listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to say right now. Listen to me right now. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. The Israelites. <laughs> the Israelites allowed the adversary to tell them, to dictate to them how they were going to fight him. But my question to everybody is, did Goliath ever prove himself to the people of God? No, he never proved himself. The way that he intimidated the people of God is when he opened his mouth. When the man of great stature began to open his mouth and begin to declare to the people, this is how it's going to be. But my question is, Goliath, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to something in the spirit realm right now. Goliath, who gave you authority in my life? Who told you? Who gave you the voice in my life to tell me how it's going to be? Who gave you the right to speak to me in that way? Do you know who you're talking to? I'm not just a normal somebody. I am a child of the king. And I will walk in authority. And I will not listen to the voice of the enemy any longer. There's strength in numbers. But listen to what I'm about to tell you. And I'm about to close. Is how... Did the Israelites get to this place? Holy Ghost, help me right now. How did the people of God get to the place where, where the enemy had the ability to speak into their lives and begin to tell them how it's going to be and how high they need to jump and how they're going to dress and how they're going to do that? Let me just tell you, is when you are silent, when you don't say anything, you have given the enemy the authority. When you don't find a place to pray and speak up to the enemy and say, you will not torture my family anymore. God wants to break a generational curse off somebody's life today. I'm speaking specifically to somebody right now. He wants to break generational curses. You don't have to deal with the nicotine, sir. I'm talking specifically to somebody right now. Let me tell you something. The enemy has told you for long enough that you were addicted and you've always going to be addicted. But I rebuke the lie of the enemy because there's strength in numbers. There's strength. There's strength in numbers. And devil, you're a liar because I don't have to be what you tell me I'm in. I am. I don't have to fight the way that you're telling me I have to fight. But I will do and I will fight with my brothers and I will help them overcome. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. Now listen to me. The time, the reason that the enemy, the reason why we have gotten in the place is we have quit praying and opening our mouths. We have allowed things. I feel the Holy Ghost. We have allowed things for too long, too long to live in our lives that have no business being there. Hear me. I know I'm not your pastor, but I'm just a young preacher that wants to see the glory of God fall. And let me tell you something. It's when we allow the enemy to dictate our every move that we have lost. And we feel like we have to take on the enemy by ourselves when God has given you a church. 
God has given you a family. And during this quarantine, I'll tell you what's happening is we have given every excuse why not to go to church. I don't want to go to church because I don't want to, I don't want to get anybody sick. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And now there's a comfortability and now we won't even go to church. We won't even grace the doors and we wonder how did we get there? It's because we have forgotten that there's strength in numbers. We can't fight the enemy on our own. Listen to me, church. You can't fight the enemy by yourself. You need a church. You need a pastor. You need a man of God. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. There's strength in in numbers, listen to me. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God's dealing with God's dealing with the family. God's dealing with a wife right now. God's dealing with you and helping you to know you need to mend some relationships. You need to mend some relationship with some friends. You need to help somebody and say, God, I need to surrender. I, I, I haven't been in the best place that I need to be. But in order to shut the enemy up, we've got to realize there's strength in numbers. There's strength. In numbers. <laughs> There's strength in numbers. Now they're about to close. And I'm going to go early to the first book of the Bible. In Genesis. I'm going to go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Where the enemy, the serpent, is talking to Eve. And he's beginning to put doubt into her mind, into her spirit. And the enemy is trying to sow a little doubt in her mind and in her spirit. Has God said, questioning, God knows that if you eat of this tree, that you will become as God's. But the thing that hurts me the most about the fall is that we blame Eve for everything because she ate it first. But let me tell you something. The Bible says that after she partook of the fruit, she gave to Adam that was with her. There was somebody standing beside her. And because of the silence of Adam, the, ma the fall of mankind happened. Let me tell you something. Silence is killing us right now. Silence is killing us. Silence is killing the church. Okay, listen to me. Silence is killing us when we will see things and we won't say a word. Remember, there's strength in numbers. But I'm going to ask you something. Who, who is around you? Who's around you right now? Who is your inner circle? Because I'm telling you, there's some people that are watching and there's people that will watch it eventually. That, yeah, there is strength in numbers, but the people that you are around right now are affecting how you are seeing things and how... You are seeing your own church. People that have left your church, people that have, have backslidden, people that have decided to go a different way, and now they want to tell you how you need to live and how you need to act. Somebody needs to listen to me right now. You need to watch the people that will stand by you but won't say anything when you're doing wrong. Adam was there. Adam was there. He heard. He heard everything that the serpent was saying, but Dalpin not his mouth one time. Didn't say a word. In First Samuel, those people of God heard heard what the Goliath was saying, and they didn't say a word until a seventeen-year-old boy decided to come and fight him. There's strength in numbers. 
their strength in numbers. Let me tell somebody right now, you got, you need a church. You need a church. The people, the people of God, the people of God could have easily defeated that Goliath. If they would have realized the, the, my help is right beside me, hiding my brothers and my sisters. The help that I need is in my brothers and my sisters. You can't fight this on your own. Somebody hear me. You can't fight this thing called life and the things that you deal with and that bombard your mind. The spirit of depression. You can't fight depression on your own. Find a church. Find a pastor. Find somebody. Go to God and say, God, I can't fight this Goliath by myself. But with you, I can do anything. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm done. I feel the Holy Ghost. Always remember this. There is strength in numbers. There's strength in numbers. You can do anything. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. We can do greater things when we're together and not separate. Somebody hear me. God has a great revival for Calvary if we will become unified. If we'll say, I want more than anything to see families come together, families saved. I believe that this service today is a, a clarion call to everybody. Let's get unified right now. I believe God's coming back. And the greatest revival is yet to come. But it's coming when the church says, hey, let's go to our upper room. <laughs> the day of Pentecost came when they, when, they, when they were in the upper room in one mind and one accord. Ten days seeking and searching for that promise that God said, I go away. But there is something coming. The, comfort, the comforter is coming. Uh, their strength in numbers and as they're sitting up there waiting for this promise they're for 10 days they're all in what I'm searching for that because their strength in numbers let's pray right now I feel the Holy Ghost so strong and God wants to move on you I know it's a little weird and I know I'm not there and you're not at the church but I wonder if we could all lift our hands right now and begin to pray God if there's anything in me, if there's anything in me that's causing discord in my church, take it away. If there's anything in my heart that's keeping me from getting together with my brothers and my sisters, cleanse me. Cleanse me, God, because I've got to make it. And I want to make a difference in my world. Does anybody want to make a difference in this world? Can you feel what I feel right now? I lift your hands and begin to talk to God right now. There's strength in numbers, Calvary. There's strength in numbers, Calvary. God wants to do something great. But it's when we decide to put our differences aside and say, God, whatever you want, whatever you want to do, however you want to use me, I'm willing. God wants to do something great if we will realize there's strength in numbers. Thank you so much, Brother O'Neill, for allowing me to speak to your great congregation. 